The DevExpress Express App Framework offers a security system with a high degree of control over user permission. In this video, we'll create an application server and implement server-side security. We'll use the complex security strategy and demonstrate new permission types, including type level, member level, and object level permissions. So let's get started. Here, we'll be working with a simple XAF application order tracker designed to manage orders and products. In the iOrder.cs, we can see the order object exposes a list of order items, and an order item exposes a product. We'll run the application to get a sense of how these elements are displayed in the application UI. From the navigation pane, we can switch between order and product views. We can also traverse the list of order items with the previous and next object buttons. Now let's return to the source. The XAF security system can be run from the server side. An application server project template simplifies the creation of the application server. We'll use this template to add the application server project to our solution. In the Solution Explorer, right-click the solution and select Add, New Project. In the Express App Framework category, choose the application server template, name the project, and click OK. The created application server will directly connect to your application's database to handle initial database creation and database update. Here the client application name, client application modules, and the database connection string must be made available to the application server. Begin by adding references to the client's module project in the new project. Add the ordertracker.module, ordertracker.module.win, and ordertracker.module.web. Now we'll configure the application server. Right-click the application server service c -sharp file and select View Code. Locate the application server service constructor and change the application name property to your client application's name. Here we'll be using Order Tracker. Next, add client applications modules to the modules collection. Here these modules are ordertracker.module, ordertracker.module.win, and ordertracker.module.web. The application server is configured by default to use Active Directory authentication with a simple security strategy. We'll experiment with some basic user permissions. To enable login under different accounts, we'll set authentication to authentication standard. We'll also change the security strategy to Security Strategy Complex. The connection to database is specified in the server's configuration file. We can copy a valid connection string from the client application configuration file and assign it to the server connection string key in the server config. The connection string key in the server's config specifies the server host name and port. Here, we've set it to localhost on port 11003. We'll replace the client application's connection string with an appropriate combination of connection string, port, and server name. Note the client application doesn't directly connect to the database. The client connects to our application server, and the server connects to the database. Now we'll make the necessary changes to the client WinForms application. The client application configurator should be instantiated before the XAF application.setup method call. The required code is commented in the solution template. We'll uncomment this code. Next, invoke the application designer by double clicking the Win application C -sharp file. By default, a newly created XAF application uses UI level security. To use server-side security, drag the security strategy proxy component to the security pane. And specify the connection string for the security service in the properties window. By default, the connection string for security is the same as our data service. If the authentication strategy assumes the interactive login, the presence of an anonymous account is required. This account has access to the logon form. Also required is the administrator account with full control over all available objects. To proceed with account creation, open the updater.cs located in the database update subfilter of the module project. 
In the simplest case, you can copy the required code for the updater file from the Create Predefined Users and Roles topic in documentation. This code creates anonymous. And this code creates the administrator role and administrator user. With all required changes made, we can install and run the application server. Let's run the Visual Studio command prompt from the Start menu. For our purposes, you'll need to launch the Visual Studio command prompt with administrator privileges because we'll be installing and running a system service. Navigate to the Application Server's Output folder. Run Install Util with the server executable name as the parameter. After successfully installing, enter the net start order tracker server command to start the server. The application server should always be run in the background when the client application is in use. To rebuild the server or reference modules, stop the server with the net stop command. Now let's run the Windows Forms application. Log in as administrator. Here we left the password field in the updater file empty for the sake of simplicity. We can see the My Details, User, and Role Navigation items that are added by security. To create a new role, select the Role Navigation item and click New. The new role will be called Sales Manager and will have full access to orders, order items, and products. Below we see a list of type level permissions. We can mark each checkbox individually or select Grant to grant full access at once. Save the Sales Manager role. Now let's create a Sales Manager user. Create a user object named Sam with an empty password and assign the Sales Manager role to the user. Notice permissions are not directly assigned to a user. Users have roles characterized by a permission set. For each user, these roles determine what user actions can be performed. We'll re-log on here as the newly created user. We see that specified objects are fully accessible. At the same time, the user and role objects are unavailable, as we granted no permissions to security objects to the Sales Manager role. Let's log in again as Administrator and create the Storekeeper role. Grant Navigate and Read permissions for Order and Order Item objects. Now, right-click the product record. We'll manage member-level permissions for the current role. We'll grant full access to the name property and leave price read only. Save the storekeeper and create a user, John, associated with this role. Let's log in as John. And notice orders are completely read-only. John can edit name property in order, but cannot change the price. Let's log in again as administrator and explore object-level permission. As demonstrated earlier, non-administrative users don't have access to security objects like users and roles. We'll create a role that is allowed to modify the current user object. Let's call this new role Application User. In the permissions list, find the user record. Double click it and switch to the object permissions tab. Next, add a new permission with the OID equals current user ID. We'll associate the role with Sam and John. Let's log in as Sam. Notice the My Details navigation item is now available. Now we'll configure the ASP.NET application in the same manner. 
will navigate to the web configuration files and use the appropriate connection string. In the designer, we'll add the security strategy proxy control and provide it with the correct connection string. Finally, in our global, uncomment the instantiation of the client application configuration. And that's it. Let's run the ASP.NET application to see the results. And note that the web UI provides the same capabilities for managing permissions and also works exactly the same way in the UI as was demonstrated earlier in the WinForms counterpart. Thanks for watching. Let's see what develops.